Dead Mouse Promotion. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a sort of a simple look on the hardware of the iPad. I'll talk a bit about what's inside and what makes it tick. And uh, then we're going to look at um, how that hardware interacts with different aspects of the iPad. If you'll notice at the, uh, at the bottom, we'll take a look at the bottom first. If you look at the bottom of the iPad, you have the, uh, the connector port for the, P for the PC and Mac where you connect it up. And uh, then you have the speakers over here. It's three little notches and if you can see it's got some sort of wire mesh inside, so that's sort of a nice touch, having that. And again, the USB connector port. Now what a lot of people are having trouble with, um, with the USB connector port, is it wasn't charging on a lot of, um, on a lot of uh, computers, and that's why I think it's tw it could be a 10 volt or 12 volt USB port. But um, all USB ports these days are 5 volts, and the iPad uses a 12 or 10 volt um, USB port to charge. And what the problem with that is, when you plug it into a PC or a Mac that doesn't have that capability, you end up not being able to charge your iPad. So what happens is you need to connect the dock directly to the wall and have that char have it charged that way. So which is a sort of a downer. But um, again, if we take a we'll take a quick look at the side. Um, if you notice here, we have the uh, the volume rocker right there, and then here we have the uh, orientation lock. So what the orientation lock does is let's take a look at it. If we open up the home screen, and you notice that if we turn it like this, turns the home screen, turns it back, but if you turn on the orientation lock, it locks it into one orientation. And if we turn it off, we can put it in this orientation so it locks. Then at the top, we have the, uh, the power button, of course, for turning the iPad on and off. And then over here, we have the, the headphone jack and the handy dandy mic. So that'll be handy when doing like stuff like Skype calls and stuff. And you can also plug in a uh, an iPod headphones and stuff to uh, to uh, with a mic on it to do Skype calls and stuff like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the uh, outlying software elements of the iPad and uh, how it interacts with the uh, with the hardware of the iPad, like touch interface and stuff like that. So. Um, what we're going to do is, we're, well, first take a look at the calendar app, which is a nice um, add-on for the iPad. Um, it comes default on the iPad, but I really like it because you can organize all your stuff, and it's really nicely laid out. And I'm a big, um, I'm a designer, so I really like this kind of style. Very well laid out, simplistic. Um, you can view by week, day, bait, really um, everything you can do in the, iP in the iPhone you can do here and more. Um, being able to view the calendar right here, and then also have your uh, list of things to do here which is nice also the notes app the notes app is still a simple app like it was on the iPhone but it seems to be more robust in, in the, the release on the iPad um, it features a, uh, a, a sidebar type thing which is cool because it looks like it's like a little leather pouch holding the paper which is a cool touch um, the maps app is really slick so if I want to go in and you'll notice that the iPad hardware in software and hardware is really really responsive. A device like this should not be this responsive, but in this case it is. And uh, Apple's done an absolutely fantastic job on uh, making this work like a device like this should. So let's take a look at the settings application. So it's basically like you would expect on an iPad. You have the different um, settings on the side that you can you know, go through and then once you click into one like general you can view the options in here. So if we go to brightness and wallpaper, and we go into the home screen wallpaper, and we choose, you know, we choose um, a different wallpaper for the iPad, or uh, let's say we want to choose this one. So now we chose that. We can set it to as a lock screen, or we can set it as a home screen, or we can set it as both. So that's really cool. Notifications again. So it's basically all relevant to the to the uh, iPod Touch and the iPhone but just blown up and made yeah, a little bit easier to navigate. So that's that. Uh, the YouTube app is really awesome because I personally I like it almost better than the actual um, website and the browser itself because it's so well laid out. So let's go to um, featured videos. But if we click into a video, um, it loads, in, loads up the video. And I gotta mention it's quite fast. Like for 
a uh, mobile quote unquote device. It's really fast. You can control you can control the volume just by pressing the little buttons. And I gotta mention that the audio quality coming from these little speakers is quite um, good. These little these three little speakers right there coming from that. The audio quality is quite good. Um, the screen is really nice, really nice to watch videos on. And you can uh, zoom in and watch it full screen. Now let's take a look at um, the uh, browsing experience in the iPad. It's, now, of course, it's not the fastest browsing experience ever, and it's certainly not the best browsing experience, but it is really good. Like I really enjoy, you know, like even, like um, I was worried that for tech help I'd have to do a lot of extra coding and optimizing for the iPad, but it seems to gobble up our website really well. Um, there's no formatting issues. Um, it looks to be a really solid um, contender for browsing the internet on. Um, you still get the checkerboarding, which is not great, but you know what can you do? This is our executive editor, Ricardo Trejo. Um, this is his website, and it loads really fast. If we go to his blog, oops. Sort of hard using it at this angle. It works no problems. Um, the browsing is really the browsing is, you know, surprisingly useful. Next thing we want to look at is uh, photos, which is a really um, surprisingly well done um, representation of looking at photos. Um, if you if you want to look at uh, um, an album of photos, I guess you can grab some photos and and then open them up and you know look at all your photos and then you know, go into them so you can click into this one and slide and the photos load instantly. This is insane. Like when you even when you're um even when you're uh scrubbing through all the different photos, you'll notice that they're fuzzy at first, but then they immediately crisp up. So that's really cool. Um it's surprising how responsive um zooming is on photos. Like it's really um like responsive and you can, you know, it's it's just mind-boggling how responsive it is. Um, if you you can you know rotate photos and move them around and stuff, so it's really really well done how they manage to you know squeeze as much power as they can out of this little A4 processor and make it you know so snappy. It's almost too responsive. It's like you're touching something physically. The iPod app is I find it. Tiny bit awkward. I wish they would have implemented it a little bit, little bit differently, so it was less like iTunes. But I'm sure people like that a bit. Um, you got your volume slider up here. You can look at your podcast, your audiobooks, um, new music, your music. So if you want to view in a songs view, you can look at it more in a text like list view. If you want to look at it via artists, it'll it'll display the little first letter of the artist's name up there. You can view it in albums. So I can't, you can't zoom in and make the albums bigger, but this. So it's sort of nice how it animates it coming in. You can view all your different things. So if we put up this album. So here's that music. And you can click and you can, uh, you can control the different things that you can control where you are in the song. You can pause it. You can control the volume. You can make a genius playlist. You can flip it over and view the different songs. You've got some other cool stuff in the Photos app I forgot to mention. Um, you can set it to play music. You can choose the music. So you can choose, let's just choose a random one. So you got, it. it it's uh, It's really cool how it animates the uh, the photos when you're, when you're uh, changing, when it's going through all the different photos. It's not like just a fade or a swipe or uh, different things that it actually, it actually um, looks really cool. And it's just little stuff like this that would make uh, make Grandma go crazy.